Hello, CC Paul. I truly hope that you are all doing very well and welcome to today's cryptocurrency technical analysis. We're going to be diving straight into the Bitcoin charts here together, going over what we absolutely love, and that's trading and the analysis here on Bitcoin. I'm going to be going over the most important levels that you've got to be aware of right now. Okay, we're currently at the CC resistance. I'll be explaining what I'm looking for next. I'm going to be giving you a really nice, professional and concise explanation of why we've seen this move to the upside. I'm going to pick up right where we left off yesterday's video, okay? And in that video, I was obviously talking about uh, the big pump on Bitcoin, why we can still be expecting a large move to the upside, and why I was currently in the long position. I placed a lot of emphasis yesterday on being aware of resistance into support flips. E.g., you've got your next level of resistance, but if you break through that and backtest it, why we have to be looking for higher in this continued short squeeze to the upside. So let's go over to the charts. I've said it once and I'll set it again, ladies and gentlemen. This is a dead chart right now. This is gamblers galore. What are we going to do to transform ourselves from a gambler into a professional trader with a well thought through plan? It's by adding on our technical analysis. So I'm going to add on the TA that I have prepared for you a little bit earlier. And here we can see this chart is now brought to life. We currently now have a very good understanding of every single level on this chart, ladies and gentlemen. So let me just explain a few things that we got on here. I would first of all like to explain this move to the upside and just show you how actually with using our technical analysis, we have been able to see the continued support flips, right? So if we just zoom in here very locally on the most local move to the upside, we obviously have first put in our low of that value area low. Rise in price, overall back testing the CC. That was our Fibonacci taken from low to high. We back tested the CC, right? With that, we also form the swing fur pattern of the last low. We form this move to the upside. If we just zoom in now on a one hour time frame, we can see in a lot more detail what happened next. From that CC, we got our rise in price, range bounds, bullish divergences, back test of the daily, another rise in price, which then gave us our next move, which was a back test of the point of control. Obviously, I've talked about this a few times with uh, you know the long setup offered that back test of the point of control, which happened to the exact dollar. Okay, that was obviously a few days ago now, but we back tested that point of control perfectly. From there, we reclaimed the weekly. Okay, and I'd also like to show you just something in terms of the order flow here for a second. So when we also see after the back test of the point of control, we got above the weekly level. Okay, this was back on the 25th, okay, so literally yesterday, and we were back testing that weekly, and I just want to show you what the divergences we're looking at, okay, here, were extremely large bullish divergences, right? So this is the back test of the point of control, this is the reclaim of the weekly, crazy big bullish divergences forming, right? So we've seen it once after this, and then we saw it once again after the reclaim of the weekly, just really big bullish divergences, and all we're doing right now is, you know, getting into support flip, support flip, support flip. Once again, resistance into support flip with once again, bullish divergences, continued move to the upside. I got asked a question. Obviously, I have been really happy and confident taking short positions on Bitcoin. And I know some people, especially newer traders, are going to be really, really surprised. Daniel, you're taking short positions. Or other people might think, wow, you've got absolutely wrecked taking short positions. I can tell you this, I have been taking short positions and I have not once got wrecked. Why am I not getting wrecked by taking shorts in an uptrend? First of all, risk management, okay? I'm able to take shorts at very high levels of confluence because based off of my trading plan, okay? Once taking that short position, I'm obviously looking for a relatively quick take profit one because I recognize the trend is up. But nevertheless, this is a short position that has been thought out. It has a very good invalidation, e.g. I have a stop loss. Okay, so I'm never going to get wrecked off of losing one trade. Why? Because that stop loss is my risk management to protect me from getting wrecked, right? So I've not been wrecked once during this whole uptrend, but yes, I have taken some short trades. And of course, I've also taken some long trades. I'm still in that long trade, not in the short trades that I've took over the past few days, right? So I've been out of those shorts. Of course, some of them were profitable. Some of them have taken losses on. But overall, this is my way of protecting my capital at key levels of resistance. And then I was asked this really, really great question yesterday with inside the group. This is obviously the champions group. I was asked the question, are you shorting here? This was yesterday. And my answer was simply, if we lose the value area high, then I'm planning to. And once again, where is the value area high? Let me just zoom in here and show you. 
Okay, let's just bring this back out to normal view. Value area high, $19,991. Okay, so really simply, I'm asked the question, am I going to short here? I say, if we lose the value area high, yes. What happens in the end? We never lost the value area high. We actually back tested it once again, very perfectly for another continued move to the upside. So just looking at this chart here, ladies and gentlemen, I just want you to truly appreciate the technical analysis that we have here. Daily, which was from Friday, back tested to the absolute dollar on Sunday. Point of control that we marked out on Sunday, back tested to the absolute dollar on Monday. Then we go on to Monday, Tuesday, back testing the weekly with very large bullish divergences. Continued move to the upside. Back testing our value area low that once again, we had marked out. Okay, that was while we were down here, we were saying, okay, let's be aware of a resistance support flip. They placed a lot of emphasis, resistance, support. What did we do with this value area high? Resistance broken through like butter, back tested to the exact dollar for another move to the upside. Resistance into support, okay? And so really simply, you can see here, I'm not, I've obviously not taken that short because we never lost the value area high. If we lose, I will short. If we don't, I won't. And what we've done, we didn't. And we got our next move to the upside. Okay. And you can even see here locally here, ladies and gentlemen, how we are seeing resistance here off of these wicks flipped into support off of a back test. So the, the levels here are very well respected. We're looking at a few things. Market structure, which remains bullish. Okay. We can use our order flow, which has obviously been remaining bullish. We're forming like bullish divergences, right? We are then also taking into account our resistance support flips. And then obviously our Fibonacci levels. So what are we at now? As you can see, we're locally getting a pullback here, right? We're locally getting a pullback. So let's come out to the four hour and I'll explain the exact reason why. Fibonacci taken from the overall high on the 13th of September to the overall low on the 13th of October, <laughs> 13th of the month, putting in pivots. And we are into the CC right now. Okay, so I think you can truly appreciate every single pivot on this chart has been very well respected. Like the, the technical analysis here is truly, truly, truly brilliant. And I'm very, very pleased with this. And once again, I just want to put you in this state of mind as a professional trader. Let's just say we took a short position off the low of this CC. Okay. What are you looking for now? You could be looking for that relatively quick take profit one. Okay. So you'd be looking to lock in a take profit one. If you were obviously down here on the lower term timeframes, what could we be saying? Take profit ones. Be looking for the last low here made. Okay, this could be our relatively nice take profit one. If you got in at the higher the CC, this would be your local take profit one. And then you're envisaging a local range to form here, right? Of course, and if you lose this local range, you can be looking back down hopefully to the VWAP, right? Okay, which is going to be down here currently around 20,000, you know, let's just say $20,573 currently. But this is obviously changing. So this is. A, a way that you can get in as a, as a scalp trader. You have to be very, very good trader. I'm not going to be recommending this to anybody um, unless you feel that you are practiced and well versed in the realms of trading. Because if you're trying to take these scalp trades and you're not a good trader, then that, it's highly likely you are going to lose money. I'll be totally honest. You have to be a very good trader to scalp trade. But if you are a good trader, if you feel you have the experience and you know emotional capability here to scalp trade, why do I say that? Because Generally, people lose money scope trading because they'll take this scope at the CC and then they won't take profit one because they're like, oh, I'm in a, I'm in a winning short position. I'm just going to, you know, wait for lower prices, even though this is my good take profit one. I'm not going to take profit here because it's going to go lower. And then it goes above their entry and then they don't take the stop loss because they're like, oh, it's going to go down. I don't want to realize this loss. No, none of this is going to help you in trading. It's only going to get you wrecked. You've got to take your take profit one. You've got to take a stop loss at your invalidation, right? Otherwise, you're definitely going to get wrecked. That is the biggest difference between, you know, somebody that's losing a lot of money and that's someone that understands probabilities in trading that can make money. You do not need to be winning every single trade. I myself am taking losses in this market, but I've told you many times what we're doing is I'm keeping my losses small and my winners big. I'm only taking shorts where I feel there's a very easy invalidation, e.g. where I'll get out of that trade. I'm not going to hold on to that. No, I'm getting out of that trade for a loss at times. It's absolutely fine. Losses are normal part of trading. Yeah. Got to be, got to be able to take a loss. Otherwise you're not even able to make money. Okay. Because you're probably not even going to be able to take profits. That is a problem that people struggle with. They can't take profits. 
because they think, oh, it's going to go up more, it's going to go down more. Okay, you've got to understand a few things. What's hedging? Okay, then you don't need to be so tight on hate, take profits, right? But you've got to understand hedging, you've got to understand validations, you've got to understand context, you've got to understand your very important levels. And thus far, all we've seen is continuous resistance into support flips. You know, even our local resistances, they are acting as resistance. But overall, we've got to understand the context here, and that's highly likely higher. Okay. And, you know, yeah, we're at this CC, but our bigger levels are still above us, right? I said yesterday, um, you know, if we do this SR flip, then really, I really think we can be pushing towards like twenty-two to $23,000. Like, for me, this CC, I'm aware of the CC, right? I'm, I'm aware of it. You can't deny that. If we do reverse it this zone, I'm definitely aware of why it happened. But I do think, personally, that we can be drawn towards these higher levels. Of course, we have this bit of confluence here, weekly NPOC. But really, you know, I'm thinking to myself, this large efficiency can be filled. And actually, we can soon see ourselves back up at around twenty-two to $23,000, right? Um, it's, it's not really out of the realm of expectations. It's, it's very much... Uh, achievable here. Of course, I'm taking this level to level. You're not going to see me long into the CC. But if I can get an acceptable pullback, let's say to the VWAP and I get some sort of day trade setup, then yeah, I'm, I'm happy to take these type of trades, e.g. a long scope trade that can turn into a nice day trade here as we move up, just as I managed to get into that long that I was talking about off of the exact dollar POC. Okay, it's more of this day trade that has now turned into a potential swing trade, right? Um, and it's like many of my short trades, they start off as sculpt trades and they end up being nice swing trades. Obviously, that short I was in last week, I was continuously compounding it at resistances. But in the end, you know, that, that trade got stopped out absolutely fine. You know, it ended in a I ended, it ended in profits because, you know, the, the, the compounding was continuously higher and I got out of it while it was still below my entry price. But, you know, could have realized more profits in the end. I, I didn't, but you know, I still made a few Bitcoin on it and it's it's absolutely fine for me. Now I've got my spot profile moving up in price and I'm just aware of the next levels where I'd look like to hedge that profile. So yeah, I've tried to keep this one very professional, very concise for you, really explaining exactly what I'm looking at, why we've seen these moves. I want to say once again, nothing here is random. I've explained and known in advance every single pivot here locally, every single pivot that we've had here has been marked out in advance. It's levels that we are aware of in advance, okay? And all we've seen is continuous tests of those levels in this uptrend absolutely perfectly. Each low, look, low of the CC, low of the daily, low of the point of control, low of the weekly, low of the value area high. All levels of these were given in advance. If you want that, of course, you're going to primarily get that over on our website, which is chartchampions.com. Here we have daily live streams. Every single day you get live streams. You've got the live trading. You've got the education. You've got the templates and the cheat sheets. Okay, so you've got the education, the live trading, everything that you could want. Okay, today I have a contenders live stream. Um, so if you're interested in that, it's like a mastermind roundtable where the members themselves can come in and ask questions on the stream. It's like a nice interactive one, getting people, uh, you know, on stream to ask their questions. And here we are answering them. And so, yeah, this is like coming into a nice uh, roundtable mastermind idea that we're going to be doing once a month. So if you're interested in the mastermind live live stream tonight, that will be for the contenders and the champions, of course. This is more of a focus on the educational side of things. And then if you want, of course, our updates, our live streams, our live trading updates, then that's obviously for the champions only. But yeah, for me, I hope that you've enjoyed this video. I hope that it's made sense to you. I hope that you understand the levels that I'm aware of why I personally don't think this CC has a lot of confluence, okay? Of course, I'm keeping my eye on the ES and DXY. DXY locally pulling back, of course, bullish for Bitcoin. ES moving up, also bullish, well, also, no, sorry. DXY pulling back is bullish for Bitcoin, okay? And the ES moving up is bullish for Bitcoin because the DXY is inversely correlated. The ES is absolutely, con you know, fully correlated. So these moves are very nice right now. These are other markets that I'm paying attention to. Um, of course, Ethereum also moving up, which is another correlated asset to Bitcoin. So right now we're seeing a lot of strength. I'm trading with the trends. I'm aware of uh, my next levels. I'm not too keen on this CC, to be honest. I would like to see a push higher, but you know, if we reject here, I understand why. But personally, I would like to see higher still, right? Um, so yeah, I hope that you've thoroughly enjoyed this video. If you have, you can give this video a very big like and you can share it. Of course, we're still doing the $100,000 giveaway. So if you're interested with that, 
Of course, that was the video that we done from the 19th. I'm giving away $100,000 uh, trading profits that I made, and this is obviously going to a good cause. So, you know, if you're interested in participating, all you need to do is hit that subscribe button, and we're going to be giving away, yeah, $100,000 because it has been a very good, uh, you know, good month of trading for us. So we're, we're feeling very, you know, good in that regards, and we want to help and give back. So if that's of interest, hit the like, hit the subscribe. We'll give away $100,000. And if you want to see more or learn from us or follow our live updates, come over to chartchampions.com. That's where I've got the live stream tonight. Well, literally in a few hours time. So yeah, if that's of interest, catch us over there. I'm going to wrap this up and just say thank you ever so much. I always will send my regards. I will always send my love. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You all mean the world to me. And that's me signing out. CC Paul, send their regards. Thank you ever so much. Have a brilliant day ahead. And, you know, if you're feeling down, if you're feeling happy, you want a community, come over and, and talk to us over here at chartchampions.com. Cheers, everybody. Thank you. Have a good day. And that's me signing out. Goodbye. And I'll end, of course, with the financial advice. Trade disclaimer, legal disclaimer. None of this is financial advice. It's just education, entertainment video only, and all trades on paper demo counts. Okay. Thank you. And goodbye. Cheers.